between American Gerald Miller and Poland's Marius Vak. 52 wins between them and a real chance to make their mark and force their way into this heavyweight mix, which of course is fascinating. Yeah, you know, it's pretty open aside from Joshua Wilder, the two big guns. Now, the, the remaining heavyweights in the top, at the top of upper, upper echelon, are, it's a pretty open division, you know, I think with one solid performance, a guy like this, a guy in a fight like this, can really put himself at the, at the forefront of, of a fight with either guy, uh, Joshua or Wilder. Referee David Fields is a pretty big guy, but he just adds to the weight in there. Almost 40 stone between these pairing of Gerald Miller, who scaled 283.4 pounds, and that's light for him. Yeah. And VAC 268, 19 and 20 stone. Big, big heavyweights. And we know sometimes we can get a dramatic encounter and explosive power shots, and at others, a laborious, difficult affair. What will this be? Yeah, nice, right, nice right hand to the body by Walk, but it, well, Miller's been busy with his jab. He's able to land a right hand over the top. Notice Miller may not have a lot of experience at the upper level, but he's fought all kinds of fighting styles. He's fought boxing. He's fought uh, K-1 mixed martial arts. So he's he's a guy who he's been a sparring partner of Vladimir Klitschko for about six training camps. You know, Jarrell has more experience than, than meets the eye. Uh, being from Brooklyn, I know him well, and I know that, uh, uh, you know, that's the reason for his calm demeanor uh, in the ring, despite not having all the big experience as a professional boxer quite yet, and as, far, as far as fights are concerned. I remember visiting Vladimir's training camp a couple of times. We saw Miller there. He's had plenty of sparring and with Deontay Wilder as well. And as Paulie was saying, a real mixed background, martial arts, and yeah. kickboxing. But now, it's this sport. And listen, he's undefeated. He's doing okay. Yeah, and, and he breathes fighting. You know, with a, with a guy who's fighting all kinds of arts, all kinds of fighting styles uh, in all kinds of different sp combat sports. He's a guy who doesn't really get nervous in there, you know? That vastly experienced. Calm. Only two defeats on the record, that very one-sided one to Klitschko, and he was stopped late on against Alexander Povetkin, but he's pretty durable, he a bit slow, but strong and tough. Yeah, yeah, he is, and that's the, and that's the reason why this is a step up for Miller. This is, uh, if Miller's able to perform against a guy like Bach, you know, it's sort of a coming out party for him at the upper echelon of the sport. But Bach is a guy who's going to make him earn it. Looking for angles here, Miller. And a very tall six foot seven and a half figure. Oh, Vac bearing down on him, even though it's Miller with the weight advantage. Vac trying to come on with a couple of jabs late on in the first. at the Nassau Coliseum in Long Island. Special day here in America, Vets Day. And with Remembrance Sunday back home tomorrow, our thoughts are all with the armed forces. And there's been particular things here tonight, haven't they, to, uh, to honor them? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's, a, it's a yearly holiday here in the States to remember the veterans that have fought in all, all the wars. Uh, in the armed forces here in the U.S. Yep, nice words from Peter Selden in his interview. Back to the big boys in the ring. Gerald Miller and Marius Vak, 37-year-old from Poland, who's eight years older than Miller, and a big underdog here. 
Can he get a foothold behind that jab, or is it a bit too late in his career for this? Well, Rock has a pretty decent jab when he uses it. It's just Miller's been a bit busier with it, you know, and Miller just looking to fight a little bit more. You see on the inside, Rock moving his hands. When Rock puts up a little bit of effort, he's going to be able to have some success. It's just a matter of he can't let a young, the younger Miller, uh, the more determined Miller, be, be more determined. A lot of times that's, that's what it comes down to when you're a prospect. You just want it more than the older, faded guy, you know? for the uppercut, the good body shots from Miller. See, Rock attempted the uppercut but missed it. He paid for it with uh, a couple of uppercuts. I mean, a couple of uh, body shots by uh, J.R. Miller. Despite them being the heavier man, he's got the edge in hand speed. He'd feel Miller. And as yeah. you're saying, Paulie, fresher and the momentum and very much the man on the way up. But back, trying to get a combination together. He's got a good Polish contingent around him. Brought a big team ring in from Krakow. Good return fire by Miller there. Good exchanges here in this round now. Yep, good combinations from the pair of them. A nice right hand from Miller oh, nice and an uppercut. And there's blood from the nose of Vac, but... That was a nice sidestep by Jerome Miller. Then the uppercut and sidestep that came back with the right hand over the top. Miller will be really aiming to shoot some sort of a statement out as he throws in the body shots. I mean, a lot of people will say he's not in the class, the league of a Deontay Wilder or an Anthony Joshua, but you know what? They need challenges, and if you can't make the big fight, they've got to make others. Of course, and of course, if Jerome Miller is able to keep winning, and as he raises up his level of opposition, keep winning, the fights become big, you know? So it's a matter of... It's a matter of Darrell Miller continuing to be impressive. He's been impressive this round. Yeah, very good uppercut. He's looking to really bulldoze through Marius back. And it's excellent combinations here from Gerald Miller, who talks a good game. And he's fighting one. And back comes back. And great action at the end of the second. The heavyweights starting to really warm up. Wilczewski, the trainer of Marius Bank, who's uh, been planted on rather a high stool in the blue corner, and he literally just sort of fell upon it and started breathing really heavily. He went back to the corner breathing really heavy as it was, you know. Let's see if he got any, if he recovered in those 60 seconds between rounds. The Polish red and white colours of the 37-year-old from Poland in fight number 36. How much left in the tank, though? of Marius Vak, the former world title challenger. And Cheryl Miller in the red and black, with those red boots, representing Brooklyn from the same Bedford-Stuyvesant area that raised Floyd Patterson, Mike Tyson, and Riddick Bowe. He's got to go some way just yeah. to live up to those sort of names. Absolutely, but he's got the character, you know, of a, of a tough street kid from Brooklyn. You know, he, he's, done, he's not scared to get in there and mix it up and get his hands dirty. Well, he came over to Eddie Hearn at the Mayweather-McGregor weigh-in and started telling him exactly what he could do with Anthony Joshua and the whole heavyweight division. And I think Eddie took a shine to him. He's a great character. Yeah. He makes for entertaining interviews on TV, that's for sure. If he can keep winning, he'll be entertaining as a fighter as well. And, uh, that's what he's proven thus far in his career. Right hand from back, and another one, just on the temple area of Miller. You see the calmness of Miller, you see what he does. This is what I mean about the experience. Even though he doesn't have the fights uh, that you would think his record shows, he has the experience of all those training camps with Klitschko, fighting in K1. So he takes a shot, he doesn't really panic. He's, in, he's on the inside. He's still creating space, looking for openings. It doesn't really take a step back or, or get befuddled just because he takes a shot or two. 
There's already more intense action in this heavyweight matchup than there was in the whole of the Dylan White, Robert Hellenius one. And here's Gerald Miller putting his foot down on the pedal and trying to take the fight back into Marius Vak. But here he comes, the Polish heavyweight with those right hands. This is good. Yeah, it is good. Good exchanges. I'll tell you what Miller's doing too that the referee's not catching on to. When Vak dips down low, he uses his left hand to hold him behind the neck and throw a, 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 right, a right-handed uppercut. He's done it a few times. He's landed a couple of good uppercuts, and the referee's not, the referee David Fields has not caught on to it. Veteran tricks, and I call it veteran tricks because this guy, again, has the experience fighting in all those sports. Walks into an uppercut there, Vak. That chin's been pretty solid throughout his career as he tries to get another right hand, but he is blowing already. And Miller, pretty mobile. You see, he breaks you mentally. I saw his last fight against Gerald Washington where he continued to walk him down and do this kind of work to him. And eventually he breaks you mentally because you just can't get him off you. And he's continuing to work, continuing to be in your face, and continuing to just muscle you backwards, landing these little pot shots and harder shots. Yeah, another one there from Miller who's Work rate's high, and he's right inside the pocket, and he's giving back all sorts of trouble, especially when he makes it up close and personal, and back very tired. Keep touching him to the body, keep touching him. He's gonna fall right in your lap. You know what I'm saying? Just take your time. But you gotta keep that head though, right? We stand getting with the defense. Come on. Pressure's good, punches are good, but you gotta keep that head Jack. Another pretty torrid round, certainly in terms of physical. Stamina sapping for Marius Fat. Gerald Miller just going about his work. Now look, you know, they, they may not be as good as your Anthony Joshua's, your Deontay Wilder's, your Tyson Fury's, even your Joseph Parker's, but you know, they're, they're trying to play their trade and they're trying to get the opportunity, aren't they? And yeah, absolutely. And, and they also can, can, can continue to get better move up, as they move up the ladder. You know, that's kind of that's kind of the point of these kind of fights. You gain experience, especially at a high level. And you hope to get you hope to get better and convince the big game big game to fight you. Neither of them look in the uh, same sort of physical shape, do they? As your Joshua's and Wilders, who are teak tough and perfectly sculptured, but you know heavyweights come in all shapes and sizes, and I think it'll be a nuisance to fight Gerald Miller. And as you said, Gerald Washington found it, and others have. Yeah, but mentally he tries to break you. You see how what he does? He's not landing the hardest shots, but you see he doesn't give ground. You see Vak throwing those shots. Look what he does. You see he tries to roll with them, tries to stay in your face. And therefore, you know, as a big man like Vak, who's not the most mobile guy, he's telling himself, man, I can't get this guy out of my face. He's, he's like, he's, he's breaking him mentally. He can't get a rest. Typical Eastern European, Marius Vak. See, Vak throws a big right hand over the top. They're pretty land landed pretty good. Miller stayed in his range, threw a couple of body shots, and stays in his face. Back decent amateur. His rise was all behind the jab when he was in control. Now the 37-year-old legs, he's being backed up more. He's trying to get that right hand springing, but he's not having the effect. Look again. Watch Miller when he throws that uppercut. Watch what he does with the left hand. And again, this is, these are not the hardest shots here by Miller. This little pot shot to see what he's doing, but he's staying in Vox's face. And that tells, makes Vox say, man, I can't get this guy out of my face. What do I have to do to catch a breather? And it breaks you mentally and makes you want to quit. That was low for Miller. And you see again with the hand on top of the yeah. head by Miller. He threw the uppercut. Yeah, flying the fields. uppercut, and he's just tapping him a little bit low there. Back, no complaints from the big pole. He tries to come back with a huge right hand and back Miller up. It's a... A brave, gritty effort this from Vac to try and stay with Miller. But boy, he would have needed a very good training camp for 12 rounds of this. Yeah. Oh. Vac trying to get a big combination going, really trying to dent Miller's confidence. Can he back him up? Trying to lean on the head of Miller there. Trying to tie him out, but Miller again. Even if Miller is maybe feeling fatigued, he's not showing it. 
And again, he, he, he doesn't want to give back any confidence. That's where Miller wants him as well. Backed up on those ropes, he could just tip and tap away and annoy and frustrate Marius back. Back, who was meant to fight Dylan White, that was postponed. This is a big opportunity for him if he can get his boxing going. He is out of breath. the pads there with Lewis Arias we saw him in June on the uh, Kovalev Ward show and he looked red hot can he step up in levels and shock Brooklyn and Daniel Jacobs tonight we'll find out a little bit later Brooklyn's own Gerald Miller in the ring at the moment trying to extend his unbeaten record in probably his toughest test to date against Marius Vac it's one of those fights that you've got to get through to move to the next level and knock on the door for title shots. Yeah, absolutely. And you want to, you, you beat a guy like Vak, who's obviously been in with some of the bigger names. You beat him convincingly the way Miller is thus far. And, you know, it, it solidifies your placement among the top 10 heavyweights in the world. He's winning every round, isn't he? Yeah. And look at this. And he's feeling it, he's feeling it. The combination, the hand speed's good. Nothing on those shots by Vak, he's fatigued. He, look, not, not, nothing on those shots. He's backing up. He can't get any momentum on those on that right hand. It's more of an arm punch. It's decent at scoring, but it's not breaking the will the will of Miller from coming forward and continuing to break his will. There was a rumor swirling around this week, and you get many of them that there was a slight injury problem to Marius back, but he's uh, getting on with it. He's taking his lumps and bumps, and he's trying to just slow down. <laughs> the younger man, it's not happening. Right hand from Miller. We talk about his hand speed, but is it a bit slow motion when you compare him to the likes of, of Joshua and Wilder? Well, it's a little slower, but I tell you what, it, what where his hand speed is, is good, it's deceiving. Because he looks like a, a chubby guy, but then and he'll move around kind of in a in a kind of methodical way, moves on his upper body, and then all of a sudden he'll snap out a quick jab and a quick one too. So the change of pace, the change of speed keeps it difficult to really time him. We saw the arrival, of course, of Carlos Takam as well on the scene. With the 10 rounds, uh, he went with AJ, and he was in Monaco last week, still annoyed about the stoppage, but he's very much part of the heavyweight picture now. You know, how would he do against these boys? It's a fun fight, actually. <laughs> I'd, I'd say Takam against anybody uh, to watch him. He's entertaining. But he does the jab of Miller. Flicks in the right hand as well. Vak just looks down at his corner. He hasn't seemed happy, has he, really? No. Right, can you blame him? <laughs> Big right hand again for Miller. Didn't quite land. He's got plenty of knockouts on the record, 17. But, of course, you'd expect that as a heavyweight building up the record against preliminary opposition. Back, throwing back, but that's just lit Miller up again. And that just looks in pain as he goes back to that corner. Yep, really. See that tall stool they've got for him. Almost six foot eight. Marius Vak, and it's just a lethargic feel, and he's clutching his fist and he's dabbing his eye. How much more will he want to take of this, Paulie? We'll see. You know, that, that's, these are the moments where you look up at the round card girl, she's holding up a six, and you feel exhausted, and you're telling yourself, man, I'm not even halfway through this. 
the trouble is, as much as he's tried, he hasn't really had any sort of no. success, no breakthrough. I mean, if he could hurt Miller just once, maybe. Yeah, he's not, he's not, he's not been able to break the will of Jarrell Miller at all, and that, or, or even create doubt or cause doubt in the mind of Jarrell Miller. So Miller remains confident every round in doing what he's doing. And that, that prevents Vok from ever getting a break, because if, if he can create some doubt in the mind of Miller, maybe he'll get a couple breaks during the rounds, and the pressure will cease. And Mario's back just being looked at by the doctor. Is it the eye, or there's blood from the nose? I'm not quite sure what that was all about, but I don't know if they can look inside his head and find out what he's thinking. You remember a, an erratic heavyweight from Poland who was pretty good on his day and that was yeah. Andrew Galotta who could forget him sometimes he uh, he had no clue what he was going to do next no. when he fought Michael Grant he was winning it and in the 10th he turned around and quit yeah I asked him afterwards what happened he said I quit okay <laughs> what about with Mike Tyson yeah or <laughs> well, the fights with Riddick Bolt I know. Galotta sure was a character he was a massive character Andrew Galotta Nanix Lewis did blow him away in a round but he could really fight Marius Vat trying very hard in there to stay with Miller. But um, it's all getting hard. Harold Letterman for HBO has given Marius Vat a round. You can't agree with that, can you? Well, I don't know, maybe if you're looking for a look, maybe a sympathy round. Uh, maybe, maybe the first was a close one, you know, not, not a lot happened. But uh, other than that, I mean, I don't, I don't really see how you can get Vat even around. The uppercut though from back at a right hand. He has caught Miller a couple of times with that. There's only 17 knockouts on the record of back in those 33 wins. So he's not a, a big hitter for a heavyweight. And maybe Team Miller realized that when they took this, that they'd be able to employ these tactics of staying with him and chipping him and, and breaking him down. And that's the thing, that's kind of the Miller approach. I mean, you know, having seen him throughout his pro career, he kind of takes his approach where you know, he's going to be calmer than you and he's going to break you mentally as he keeps walking you down. Good shots inside by Miller. Yep, lovely looking uppercut there. Miller it's doesn't have the power of a Joshua or a Wilder, but he gets in your face and he starts to create doubt in your mind. And there's lobbing shots into Marius back now. And there's plenty of target to aim at for the man mounted from Poland. He's just fallen a bit short of the top level. Has had issues with drugs tests as well. Marius Vak that have haunted him. <laughs> Left hand, but Miller just soaks it up. So he's got a pretty good chin, the American. Does he remind you of anyone, or is he a sort of a completely different style? Well, he's, you know, he's consistent, but I, I don't want to say he reminds me of anyone in particular, because he, he's, a, he's a big guy. I, I first look at him, I don't think he's going to be this consistent to be able to work, but he knows how to take enough off the shots. There's some action from the last round. Bach was able to get some extension on that one-two right there, but again, hit Miller nice. But look, it, Miller didn't even take a step back. And that's got to be frustrating for a guy like Bach who's looking for any moment he can get to get rest so he can get away from assaults like this. Marius back coming off a good win over Erkan Tepper for something called the vacant IBF East-West Europe heavyweight title. Explain what is happening in this sport. <laughs> I, I just can't. What we do know is that this is a decent enough heavyweight match. 
Marius Vack and Gerald Miller. Miller, who beat Gerald Washington in July. He just wore him down in eight rounds, and this taking the same sort of pattern into the seventh now, the second half. I know HBO have given Marius back around, but it's pretty much been a similar story. Session after session, Miller doing more. Punches landed, momentum rhythm. Doesn't look deterred at all, does he? No, no, it looks confident. You know, Wack Wack hasn't been able to break his his will at all. As a matter of fact, Wack with the mouth wide open, he's the one with the look of worry on his face. And looks fatigued as well. They are screaming instructions to him, the very decorated outfits of the Polish corner. And their uh, and Miller talking. supports as well, yeah. He's Miller telling him, come on, come on. I don't know if Wack understands him, but he's telling him to come on. Yep, he's goading him in there. Basically letting him know that he's not breaking him. You're not breaking his will at all. There's nothing you have that can keep me from continuing this assault on you. Just backs off there, back as well. And the body language. Yeah, he, he saw that Miller. Yeah. And he's now trying to turn the screw. Yeah. These big uppercuts and back in a spot of bother. And the referee having a closer look as well. He's got to throw back here. Marius back. Plenty of time in the seventh round. But Miller saw an opening. He spotted something mentally, I think, yeah. in the poll that told him to go for it. Yeah, I saw it on the outside, too. Wack gave almost a look of resignation for a second, and, and, and Miller tried to capitalize in it and assault him. I'll tell you what, Paul, if he does make it through this round, Marius back, it'll be very interesting to watch him walk back yep. and see the corner. Yeah, and even the, even the communication in the corner, where they tell him and if, and if he's, he's going to even come out for the next round. Let's see. I think it'll all depend if he's able to have any success in, this, in the end of this round, the last minute. I think if Miller really controls the end of this round, he, he may quit. Again, he backs off and right right arm low there of Vac. And an uppercut. He's just walking into shots here. I'm not sure how much more he can take. It must be draining for him. Absolutely. Heavy weather for Marius Vac. And these arm punches now having no effect on Miller, who's just walking through him. Could this be another similar ending to the Gerald Washington fight? Yeah, where, where he just breaks you mentally, we'll see. Complaining about an arm, a hand maybe. He's shaking his head. I wonder if he's had enough and the referee's having a word with the doctor. Are they going to look for a compassionate stoppage here? Watch. Fajnie wyszło, fajnie to wychodzi. Lewy, odchylenie lewy prawy, ok? Chodzi to, lewy, odchylenie lewy prawy, ok? Referee David Fields really hanging around the corner. Lewy, odchylenie back, back, ok? No sign that they're going to put him out or anything like that, but the doctors are all chatting. They don't like this sustained punishment he's taking. Ok? Jak jest blisko zła, go tak, żeby się nic nie uderzy. Sklinczuj go mocno i przepychaj go do nich. He's called a timeout, David Field, for them to look at Marius Vak, the doctors. And I wonder whether this will carry on. Time! They're checking the hand. Pain in the right hand. I think there's pain everywhere for Marius back. But he's never been a quitter. He wants to carry on. That's the fighter in him, and you've got to give him credit for that, Paulie. Yeah, well, absolutely. You know, he's finding a way to come out each and every round, even though we keep doubting that he will. And the action doesn't give him any confidence because he's not winning or doing any better. For Gerald Miller, will his corner be saying more of the same or will they be saying, right, really go for it now, get the stoppage, as Vac comes back with a combination of his own. There's the bravery of the big pole. But is this now a chance for Miller, you know, to, to close the show? 
Oh, if, let's see if he has the extra gear to close it. I think Miller, one thing you see from, from Miller, he's just consistent in that one gear, continuing to break you, walk you down. But you don't see him raising the gear too much. I and mean, this would be a good time to see if he's able to raise that gear and really put Bach away right now. Because Bach is sitting there looking for an excuse to get out of this fight, I think. Body shots, head shots. Gerald Miller has had wins over Donovan Dennis and names like Damon McCreary, Nick Weavis, Fred Cassie. Not, not big ones at all, but Marius Vack and formerly Gerald Washington are, are good ones to have, good scalps for the record. If you're comparing, a Wilder or a Joshua would have had Vac well out of here by now. Yeah, I, I agree with you there too. I don't think I don't think Miller has the one-punch power that those guys have. What he does have is the ability to break you, and, and, that's, and, that, and he knows his identity. He knows who he is. He's not trying to be the one-punch guy. He's trying to be the guy to, to mentally break the opponent, just like he does usually with, with all his kind of stoppages he gets. So using that right hand, effectively Vac, or trying to like that. So he's fighting through any pain. The heavyweight division about to explode in 2018. Will they make Joshua Wilder or Joshua Parker? And what about Tyson Fury, who was hanging around Monaco last week, saying, I'm shifting seven stone, and I'm coming back to knock you all out. <laughs> Tyson talks a big game. I'm sure a lot of people would love to see him back. Joseph Parker, of course, the WBO champion. David Hay and Tony Bellew meeting on December the 17th. Shannon Briggs wants another crack. They're all at it. Even Alexander Povetkin will be back in boxing soon. Wow, Wack is getting his hands over in this round. Almost making like, almost like he's making one last stand. He's landed almost 200 punches, Gerald Miller, in the fight so far. And there's another one to the body. And Vac survives again. Not a bad round, but <laughs> he got some shots off. Well, he dug deep, didn't he? Yeah. How does he feel? They're chatting now with the doctors. He's not lifting his right arm so much. His right arm is hurting him. Okay. One more. They're going to give him one more round. And there's a lot of people around Marius back, so this is that compassion word. This is looking out for him. I mean, you've heard trainers say one more round, and they give them six more, but I think this probably is more of the truth. I mean, the only way he wins this is surely by a knockout or, or by something dramatic happening. And, yeah, and, and there's no sign at all of that. Just pickpocketing him every time he can, Gerald Miller. Work rate's been good, energy. You know, for a big guy carrying a bit of excess, and although he has lost a stone ahead of this one, still huge, but it's pretty mobile. Yeah, he for is. That size. And, and pretty easy in speed too. That was throwing that right hand in the previous round. So if it is broken or damaged, he's just putting that to the back of his mind. We were talking off camera earlier, weren't we, about whether you'd gone into a fight injured and you said sometimes I had to with my hands. Yeah, of course. But that, I think that. The, 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 the doctors on the apron, they, they want it stopped, they've, they've seen enough. And David Fields takes Gerald Miller back to his corner. All over, Marius Vac is pulled out. They'd have the chats. And although the crowd boo, I think that is the right decision. Yeah, and, and a credit to Vac, you know, he tried to he tried to hang in there for as long as he could. He was outclassed. And credit to Vac and credit to his corner for finally pulling him out. And there's no point really seeing round after round. I thought a little bit like that with Carlos Takam. 
everyone was complaining about the stoppage and yeah maybe Phil Edwards had the timing slightly wrong but the writing was on the wall Joshua was winning the rounds Takam wasn't going to win the fight yeah I don't think Takam was going to win the fight but I don't think Takam was taking the shots as cleanly as as he as was Vak here I don't think his body language was as helpless Vak was giving sort of a helpless body uh, body language for quite some rounds that's true Takam definitely wanted to fight on definitely wanted to go the distance and maybe should have been allowed to I think Vak I think Vak was waiting for somebody to rescue him he didn't want to look like a quitter he's you know? straight out the ring now he didn't want to quit himself he didn't want to do what Andrew Galotta did a few times during that um, very very interesting career he had he wanted to stick it out but I think he was rightfully saved there's no point taking you know sustained repetitive absolutely. punishment absolutely it was about time I, maybe he could have even been done around too early so let's flip it on its head what do we think of Gerald Miller's performance and uh, where would you go with him I think he continues to rise up the ranks on the heavyweight division. He continues to look the same against every opponent, where, you know, in that manner where he looks to break you down consistently. But now he's doing it against a higher level of opposition, so he continues to rise. Could he be a voluntary for a Parker, a Joshua, a Wilder I, I, in the new year? I think without a doubt he could be. We'll see if anybody gives him a shot. Gets the victory. Won almost everything. Some decent yeah, combinations. Make your own mind up about what you think of Gerald Miller at 29. Is he good enough to even be fighting for a world title? Maybe. He's part of the mix, at least. He's ranked fairly highly by the governing bodies. And no one's beaten him yet. Nope, no one's beaten him yet quite yet. And he's going to keep stepping up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, referee David Fields, acting on the advice of a physician at ringside, calls a halt to this contest. The official time, one minute, two seconds, round number nine. The winner by technical knockout, still undefeated, Jarrell Big Baby Miller.